300 blackout, 208 grain ELD match. So what can this bullet do at extended ranges? Well, so this is kind of where we're at right now. So in the first video, I talked about kind of how difficult it was because of the extreme spread difference between the 300 blackout. So um, this is kind of sloppy, but this is what I've got. So I did some math, ran some equations. Um, so on my previous data that I've done and logged, uh, just kind of, it was usually a little bit less than 50 feet, but I just called it 50 feet per sec or 50 feet uh, difference between extreme spread. So what I did was 1090, um, stay subsonic where I'm at, and 1040. Uh, so let's look at the mils and the inches. So at 200 yards, you have 4.1 mils. Uh, 300 yards, 8.5 mils. 400 yards, 13.1 mils. 500, 17.8. 600, 22.7. 700, 27.7 mils uh, that you'd have to come up to adjust to get a hit at that range. So what is that in inches? Obviously we're going to be zeroed at 100 yards, so 100 yards is zero, but with a 300 blackout, 208 grain bullet going 1090 feet per second at 200 yards, your inches of drop is 29.5 at 300, 92.1, and here we go, 400 yards, 188.2 inches of drop. 500 yards, 321.4 inches of drop. At 600, 490.2 inches of drop. And at 700 yards, 700 inches of drop. Now, let's compare that to a, the same bullet, same cartridge, everything, but with the extreme spread, 50 feet per second, 1040 feet per second. So, 100 yards, zero. Um, 200 yards, 32 inches of drop. At 300 yards, 99.6. 400, 203. 500 yards, 346 inches. 600 yards, 527. And 700 yards, 751. And that's with a 50 foot per second difference with our extreme spread. So what is the differences between that? And what do we do to keep a, let's say one, two MOA hold? And why is it so difficult to shoot subsonic 300 blackout at those extended ranges? Well, at the beginning is not too bad. It, it's, you know, if you have a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of data and you've done some shooting, it's not too bad. But the differences between 1090 feet per second and 1040 with our extreme spread at 200 yards, it's only 2.5. So not too terrible. You think at one, let's say one MOA at 200 yards is a two inch group. Now, if we add the difference um, of our extreme spread, we're gonna be adding 2.5 inches to that. So 200 yards, we got two inches. So we got four and a half inches total. So with the worst case scenario, essentially adding in extreme spread, uh, one MOA, you know, grouping. Let's say two, four, four and a half inches. So not too terrible. So we could still use that for, you know, target shooting, uh, even hunting. If, let's say the vitals is 10 inches. That's still good. We can still um, safely do that at 200 yards. But it quickly increases. Now this doesn't account for wind. Um, this doesn't account for the growth of, you know, bullet, you know, spin, any, anything that's pushing the bullet around anywhere. So it's going to increase a little bit. At 300 yards, that difference is 7.5 inches. So let me just run down that. 400 yards, 14.8 inches. At 500 yards, 24.6 inches. At 600 yards, 36.8 and 700 yards, 51 inch difference just in our extreme spread. So obviously if we're gonna try to use 300 blackout and we have an extreme spread of that difference, it is not gonna work unless your target is 50 inches or bigger at 700 yards or at 500 yards, it's gonna have to 
to, to be reliable, it's going to be, have to be over 25 inch target. So let's compare that drop data, or I'm sorry, that extreme spread with something that's going supersonic. At 500 yards, something that's comparable, 300 blackout to 308, still a 30 caliber, um, with a 50 foot per, di per second difference on extreme spread. At 500 yards, a 300 blackout was 24.6 on our extreme spread. With a 308, that's 24.6 inches. With a 308 traveling supersonic, with a 50 foot uh, difference in extreme spread, 2.6 inches. So if you're shooting supersonics and you have a 50 foot per second extreme spread, you can still be fairly accurate at 500 yards. That means let's say you have a one MOA gun, 308, 500 yards, that's five inches. Add that extreme spread in there, we're talking 7.6 inches. So if you're shooting a 308, you have not very good ammo, 50 foot per second in extreme spread, your vitals on a deer is 10 inches, not including wind, anything else, you're still kind of safe. I mean, it's pushing it because you, you've only got a couple inches of wiggle room for wind, but for um, drop, we still got, was that two and a half inches? So there's a huge difference between 300 blackout at those extended ranges and 308. Or basically we're looking at super versus subs. So what do we do to get that extreme spread down? So the first thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna go back and retry all the data that I did before just to, to double check, see where I'm at. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is try some different powders. Uh, I'll, I'll get video of all that, I'll do everything kind of quick because I already pretty much know where all that's gonna go, uh, what the results are gonna be, but I want to clarify and be a little more detailed because I did that several years ago and just kind of kept basic notes. So I'm gonna try different powders again um, and see what happens, you know, 200, 300, 400, 500 yards. Collect that data, get it all on video. I'll start posting on that and then going over it. Um, once I can find what I would consider, especially at 100 yards, I'll do it, and 200. Once I get um, a good powder that can hold, if I can get it to hold the minimum, minimum groups, so one inch at 100 yards, two inches at, at, at 200, Whatever is going to hold best there, I'll try that at, at extended ranges. Um, so once I have the best load, essentially, recipe, um, I'm going to do another shot of groups um, with the brass, and I, I'm going to see if I can do some neck turning and see if that will change anything. If um, the little bit of nuances of, of thickness throughout the neck and stuff like that will change anything. So essentially what I've got going on right now with my uh, 300 blackout load, it's a little messy in my garage, but hey. Um, so the first thing I did is I sorted all the brass. Um, I used, all this is LC, Lake City, um, military brass essentially. Um, so I've got it all, cut down, clean, tumbled, um, stainless steel tumbled so it cleans the primer pockets. Inside is super shiny, outside is super shiny. Trimmed them all to the uh, correct length so everything is exactly the same. Same case, uh, chamfered and everything else on the cases. So as far as the case goes, other than any kind of ne neck turning, um, everything essentially is as close as possible on every single one of these cases. Um, on loading, what I'm using right now is uh, H110. Uh, so the goal is in the summertime, I want to be at 1080, 1090, um, which means uh, in the wintertime it will be going much slower. But however, if I do that in the wintertime, if I have a 1080, 1090 in the wintertime when it gets hot, then the bullet will you know, end up going supersonic and that's what I want to avoid. So summertime, 1080, and I'll figure out the uh, the difference between the, the temperature range and that's something that can be adjusted for. Um, 208 grain 
ELD match. Uh, but I don't know ballistic coefficients like 670 off the box. Um, I've got all I've got all the data. I don't memorize it. But anyway, the load is um, 9.1. No, nine grains. Nine grains of H110 uh, under a 208 grain ELD match. So I did use 9.1 and when it got hotter they would just start cracking supersonic uh, when it got colder you know I was dealing with the difference in a few per second so I dropped it 0.1 grain so I'm running nine grains so which should stay um, subsonic at hotter temperatures because it'll get 100 over 100 degrees here so that's where I'm at right now um, so next step is going to be um, some velocity testing uh, group testing accuracy if these are going to hold you know one MOA where we're going to be at just double checking extreme spread standard deviation and some videos and some fun shooting so stay tuned for that and we will be taking us 300 blackout on an I don't want to say extreme long range it's extreme for the bullet but not in distance uh, so stay tuned a lot of testing